ready to talk some movies, Brennan? Yeah, okay. Well, let's go. Seatbelt down before I start the car. That's so true. Oh man. Ah. Hey, you know what all this means, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, welcome to the Corrupted Youth Podcast. I'm Dan. I'm Brennan. I'm mostly Dan. I'm going to jail because I didn't buckle up before the engine started. That's right. Well, we're doing a drive time special. That means that we record on the way to the movie and we record our instantaneous thoughts on the way back. Hopefully we don't run into any problems in between. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. With that said, I'm going to start driving, running. You start talking because it's five o'clock rush hour in Madison, Wisconsin. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well, we're going to go see Godzilla X Kong, which sounds like... um, like a smut like <laughs> thing you'd find on Wattpad where they they're like kissing each other but anyway uh yeah Godzilla X Kong the new empire which is, is there a colon in that Oh is there a colon in I don't that know. There might be that would be funny uh I got to <laughs> say it's a pretty terrible name for for a movie Yes all of this is just not good Yeah um I'm surprised this movie got made. Well, wasn't it because it got approved right away? Well, I don't think it got approved right away because after, because Godzilla versus Kong was like their last one they had set up. And then there was like the continue the monster verse, like hashtag and everything. And there was a lot of support for a new movie and they were like, Hey, we can probably make more toys. (laughs) Yeah. Um, it, it's, wow. Yeah, I'm surprised this got made, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I kind of wish they got a different director. Because it's Adam Wingard again. Again, correct? yeah. Which, I thought he did an alright job for what it was. He directed really good action scenes for Godzilla vs. Kong. And, it, and it's not that I don't like him as a director. I think he's a fine director. He does all right. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just everything just kind of looks like a cutscene from a video game from the trailer. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, this is definitely going to just be like an action packed kind of yeah. bonkers movie. And we've talked a lot about this already because yeah. we just did a drive time mm-hmm. for Godzilla Minus One, which. I mean, that's an Academy Award winning film. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. here we are, and we're going to go see some popcorn nonsense Godzilla. Yeah. Which is totally cool. Uh, definitely, definitely. Like, the fact that, you know, that we're probably going to see, like, a ton of little kids there getting all into Godzilla. One of my coworkers, uh, her son, super into King Kong, and, and Godzilla, too, a little bit. But just hearing a little kid get excited over, you know, a Godzilla movie pretty cool i'm up for that yeah and i i hear that a lot from people about where their their kids are getting into this Mm -hmm. and i think that's great yeah because there's so much for them to explore in the long run and it runs the gamut of themes you know is it dark is it funny is it just stupid Mm -hmm. you know just everything It, it does everything so that's it's really good i think for whatever your taste happen to be. Yeah, and and I am excited that we are getting a uh, a goofy Godzilla movie. You know, a, a silly one, one that's going to be a bit more outlandish because you're right, it does fit into the series because it's cross genre. It they it can be any genre at once. I mean, we just saw Godzilla minus 1 a couple months ago. 
yep. and we're and this next Godzilla movie is like tonally, tonally the complete opposite, <laughs> really. I've heard rumors that there's going to be yet another one, and it's going to be titled Giddy Up Godzilla. It's <laughs> Western themed. I would watch it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that would probably be pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Godzilla, I mean, just been around forever now, like well over 50 years. Oh, easily over 50 years. Yeah. And 70, over 70 years. Was, yeah. Well, hey, math is hard. Yeah. Everybody. So I, <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> I guess we need to remember that this is also a Kong movie. It is. And that makes me not excited about it. I'm going to yeah, be honest. Yeah. I like them doing their own thing. It was it was fun. The mashup was fun. Yeah. But I'd rather see them do their own things. And abolishing Skull Island, I think, was a big mistake. Mm-hmm. And just basically wiping it out off screen. Yeah. Ridiculous. Tragic. Yeah. Horribly tragic. And they... They give it, like, two lines of dialogue and just move on. Uh-huh. And again, I'm also going to say, I'm not too keen on the whole conspiracy theory crap either. Oh, the hollow earth? Yeah. Just, although, okay, so we're going to have to talk about uh, the series. Oh, Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. Yes, because that felt like it was a little bit of a course correction from hollow earth. And kind of made it alternate dimension. Yeah, I think it just, it tried to make it crazier. I think because the idea of like Hollow Earth felt very grounded in Kong Skull Island. Oh, it's just little holes that these monsters come out of. Yeah, that makes sense. And then in Godzilla versus Kong, they go through Hollow Earth and it's this weird like 2001 A Space Odyssey, like trans-dimensional craziness. And that was just so weird. It was so, like, unnecessary, and it just convoluted the whole thing. And then, yeah, Monarch Legacy of Monsters comes along and just kind of leans into that. Yeah, which is, I think, a better idea of, ooh, it's an actual monster-verse. There's actual, like, an alternate universe full of monsters Mm, that have access to our world. Yeah. But even that felt, like, a little stretchy at times with some of its logic of, like, when when do they come in? When don't they? Right. Is it just like when they want to eat, but then they don't really eat? I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. And like, I don't know. They showed a whole lot of monsters waking up and they're just like not in the Hollow Earth. Like Rodan, not in the Hollow Earth. All the random monsters and King of the Monsters. You don't see them coming out of like a weird like portal or anything. They're just kind of already here. So yeah, the logic on the whole thing... Very weird. But again, who are we to demand logical continuity when there used to be none? Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And, you know, if it opens up the door for wackiness, go for it. Yeah, I'm not keen on Godzilla running. I mean, he runs all the time, though, to be fair. He runs, but I don't. A lot. I don't ever really like it though. Like uh, uh, GMK, GMK. Yeah, that has some weird moments to it. Yeah, for sure. Godzilla, what, what, Mothra. Oh, Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, giant monsters all out attack. Yes. Yeah, mouthful there. Yeah, I've been saying GMK so long. I just... Yeah, I just forget. <laughs> they don't even include Baragon. He's in that movie. Why isn't he in the title? We we already got half the monsters. Okay, Dongles, if any of you are Baragon fans... Oh, yeah. Where, in. where are my Baragon fans at? <laughs> CorruptedYouthPod at gmail.com. Or uh, let's start hashtag Justice for Baragon. Justice Ooh. for Baragon. I like that. <laughs> it's a little late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, kind of like a retroactive uh, one. 23 years later, but we need some respect for him. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. He was fast in that, and I, I just didn't care for it and that's just my personal preference Mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't ruin the movie for me it at least gets them from point a to point b a little faster that's true i mean 
I think uh, one of the big reasons they're kind of leaning into that is, you know, you have King Kong with him. Or not King Kong. We're going to scrap that king part because Godzilla's the king. Yeah. Anyway, you have Kong, and he's he's always, like, running around, jumping around. So I guess they want him to, like, match his speed. Well, also we should discuss Godzilla's getting a big upgrade in this movie. Apparently, Apparently yeah. Apparently. Uh, evolved Godzilla, he's been called in, like, the toys or whatever. Yeah, like, like you can get the one where he comes with the normal <laughs> Godzilla rubbery skin that yeah. you peel off. Yeah, really weird toy. But, you know, I would call it, like, instant glow-up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because he's leaner. <laughs> yeah, more muscular. <laughs> I like that pink look, too. I, I really dig that. Yeah. I think I think it's a fun aesthetic, mm-hmm. and you know, changing up the color. It worked for Shin Godzilla. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I I really like that when they're just like, yeah, let's change this color. It makes it a lot more unique. Yeah, and we got enough blue Godzilla. Yeah, we got a decent I'm, amount of blue Godzilla. I'm cool. We got I'm a burning up. Godzilla, even like we. I'm cool with a pink Godzilla, yeah, and he's got like some spikes on his tail now too, like a Stegosaurus. Sure. Why not? You know, and, and I haven't heard anybody complain about it, too. So that's even better. Yeah. Everybody just kind of likes it the, yeah. in the comments I've seen online. So that's a positive. And uh, King Kong. Oh God, I, I did it again. Kong is going to be getting that glove. Yeah, he gets a power glove. <laughs> yeah, that's sick. <laughs> they should have just made that guy like a whole suit of armor. I would have been... I would have been okay with that. See, the more we're talking about it, the more I'm getting excited. Because I wasn't very excited this week. Because I forgot that it was even happening this week. <laughs> until, like, last night. And I was like, oh, crap, I yeah. got that movie tomorrow. Yeah. Like, I got to get a whole lot of my uh, schoolwork done just so I can go <laughs> see this movie. But, yeah, it, it, it just seems really fun. You know, Kong getting a robot glove. That's just fun. That's a fun idea. Oh, yeah. and uh, Mothra is probably going to be in this movie, too. Ooh, I hope so. Yeah, there was a little bit of a tease in a trailer. A little bit of a Mothra tease. Because, yeah, I really like the Monsterverse Mothra. I want to see more of her. And Rodan. Rodan's still alive somewhere. And we're getting some original monsters. That is actually really exciting. I always like to see yeah, some original I'm kaiju. Super cool down for new kaiju this old scar king guy whatever his name is the big orangutan not excited for him though i'm just not, gonna say that yeah orangutans that like Gah. and i get it they probably were like hey, you know what everybody was talking about big giant monkey last time yeah let's make another it's an evil monkey no guys can we get a mechanic kong Ooh, i would be so down for that That'd be great. That's that's what should have been in the end of Godzilla vs. Kong. Not a robot Godzilla. Mechanic Kong. That would have been cool. Shout out to all the Mechanic Kong fans out there. Yeah. Plus, that's kind of a fun movie, too. Yeah, that that is a fun... That is a fun King Kong movie. They, they were using him to, like, mine rocks. Like, like, because, you know... Gorillas are known for their digging abilities and their their love for mining. Yeah. Yeah, very strange. I believe in the Heisei era, there was talks of not only bringing back King Kong, but bringing back a Mechanic Kong. Uh, But that was scrapped. I wish they did that, though. Yeah, I'm sure it was just a rights thing. Yeah. But, hey, what are you going to do? We're just gonna just make more movies later somehow, some way. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, they just made like a really. They just made Godzilla versus Space Godzilla. And that movie stinks. Oh, cool design though. Very cool design. The very, giant very cool crystals design. on the shoulder. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Just that, that might be some of the worst writing in the entire Godzilla. That's Seriously. someone that has, like, a whole lot of dumb tri- time travel, right? No, that's uh, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, which... Oh. Yeah, the time travel in that movie makes no sense. No. 
It's completely messed up. Yeah, in order to explain the time travel, you just have to disregard certain like facts from the movie <laughs> for it to, to actually make sense. You have to ignore how any time travel may possibly work. Yeah, exactly. Because it completely contradicts itself and does not care. Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla is the one where there's a whole lot of like psychic stuff going on with oh, Mickey Sakusa. Yeah. And like this one dude makes this bullet that's just like chock full of diseases and infections and stuff. And you can, you just could shoot it into Godzilla and kill him. Like that was enough to kill Godzilla. <laughs> like what? They gave Godzilla AIDS. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. I'm gonna shoot some Charlie Sheen blood into him. I'm gonna inject him with cancer. Yeah. Of course, that would probably work. <laughs> no, that's how you get a Shin Godzilla. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Millie Bobby Brown's going to be in this movie. Yay! Cool. <laughs> cool. I'm really glad she's the one that we are keeping around for all these MonsterVerse movies. They should have had her more in the last one. She was fine in King of the Monsters, honestly. Like... She had some family drama. She had things to do. She had her own opinions. She does in Godzilla vs. Kong, but I'm just kind of sick of seeing her. Oh, you hear that, Millie Bobby Brown? Oh, what is she going to do? Brennan is sick of seeing you. Yeah, actually. Unless it's on Stranger Things. Yeah, she's fine in Stranger Things. <laughs> Bring us a new season already, will you? Well, all right. That whole season's up in turmoils because uh, one of the actors is going to like drop out or did drop out or something. <sighs> There's a whole lot of drama behind that, but this isn't a Stranger Things podcast. That's true. That's our other podcast, um, Dongle Things. <laughs> Dongle Things. <laughs> <laughs> We're not starting that yeah, one, by the no, way. <laughs> no. It's too much to get into. Yeah, we'd have to play some catch up. Oh, that would mean I'd have to rewatch season two. I don't want to do that. No. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I was just going to go off on a tangent, but that's all right. Um, so I ended up, and I don't normally do this at all, ever, because I find it to be hot garbage, but I went to see what was happening on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, sure. And... I was shocked, shocked, I tell you, to see that Godzilla vs. Kong had a higher critic score than King of the Monsters. That higher critic score? Yes. What? Did they watch both of those movies? I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to say Godzilla King of the Monsters is like a shining beam of good light and like good writing you know it's it's not it's not a perfect movie but Godzilla vs. Kong is a bit of a stinker yeah and they gave this one 60% and I don't put a whole lot of stake in what critics think because a lot of those folks are just like they just instantly don't like things because it's not in their wheelhouse yeah I appreciate anybody who can at least acknowledge like hey you know, this isn't my jam, but I get that people enjoy this, and I'm trying to view it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. But also, I understand, like, man, they got to watch kind of everything sometimes. Right. And that's just got to be grating. Yeah, yeah. They really liked uh, Godzilla Minus One. I remember that had, like, 100% or, like, 99%, whatever it was for, for a long time. Yeah, because it's a damn good movie. Yeah, because that, that, that movie is amazing. And worthy of more awards than simply special effects. I agree. Although the special effects win is pretty crazy, considering its contenders. True. Yeah, that was pretty insane. And it only had a $10 million budget. Like, what's the budget of Godzilla x Kong? I, I don't know. I don't really Over $100 million. I don't look into that stuff most of the time. But I got a feeling we're just going to see... A lot of uh, people who work in animation and computer images mm -hmm. 
losing their minds and their souls. Yeah. Whoa, what is... Wow. That's a whole maneuver. That is a spectacular maneuver by this lady. With somebody coming, put it in reverse to get behind me, which was like three vehicles. So I thought she was just going to hit the car. I thought this was going to yeah. be the most interesting drive time special around. Uh, I'd be like, lady, I'm recording a podcast <laughs> yeah. and I'm supposed to go see a movie. <laughs> You're buying me tickets to another showing. Yeah. This I command. Yeah. You know, Serpentor her ass. But anyways. That would be the coolest drive time. <laughs> no, it would got not. That, got that all on recording. <laughs> no, yeah. I'd be like, well, I recorded it all yeah. on audio. <laughs> and I'm going to show this audio to the police. It's just us talking about Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when does the accident come Yeah, when's come the in? accident come in here? No, guys, you gotta listen to this. It's really cool. <laughs> uh, longer drive time, too, because I picked you up from your house. So, yeah. maybe that's why, like, my brain is just kind of struggling. <laughs> this is the harder part of the drive time, because we didn't actually see it yet. That's and I've, true. I've been, like, avoiding trailers for this movie the past couple months, because this is when... The trailers start to give away a lot. Yeah, I haven't watched any either I've, since, like, a long time ago. Yeah, I think I just watched the first two. Whatever one showed Godzilla running, that's kind of where I checked out because I started laughing. <laughs> and I thought it looked like the scene from uh, the end of Batman Forever. Oh, I think <laughs> I know what you're talking running. about. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that on the, the last one. But... <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I think uh, I saw like a, a second longer of that clip and Kong is like riding Godzilla. Oh my God. <laughs> I, hey, you know what? Maybe somebody will slip on a banana peel. That would be cool. Like a big banana? Yeah. Yeah, they go down to the Hollow Earth, and there's, like, all the, all the like, other Kongs are eating big bananas. Okay, that's going to be one of my, it's going to be one of my, uh, insane predictions. Brennan, do you have any insane predictions for this? Insane predictions. Uh, hmm. I mean, the movie already looks pretty insane. That's a good prediction. Slip on a giant <laughs> banana peel. You know, there's a lot of other Kongs that they showed in the trailer. There's a whole, like, group of them. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, they get massacred. That would be kind of sick. Okay, my other... My next one is... Um, there's uh, a scene where... King Kong is given a piece of the new Godzilla's, uh, what do you call it? Like a... Dorsal plate? Dorsal plate. Yeah. Yep. That is fashioned into a nipple ring, and we get to see a <laughs> nipple piercing scene. <laughs> Both nipples, by the way. No cuts. Super powering Kong. Man, that'd be cool. Ooh, here's my prediction. I predict that um, after Godzilla and Kong team up to do some cool attack or move or whatever, we're going to get a fist bump. We're going to get a Godzilla-Kong fist bump. Maybe with the explosion after, too. Down for that. <laughs> Um, my next one is, uh, Godzilla wakes up at the end of the movie somewhere like in, in the hollow earth. And is just like, whoa, that was a crazy dream. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. I would never team up with Kong. You. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to smell like gorilla. <laughs> Oh, 
Got another one? There's going to be that little, there's going to be that little uh, baby Kong in the movie. I think it's actually like Scar King's kid or whatever. I don't know. Little, little monkey. It's not really that little. I think it's going to get turned into red paste on the ground. <laughs> in the middle of the battle, just <laughs> stomped on. Mm, I know this movie's going to have a, a blue sky laser in it. Oh, boy. My favorite. I love them so much. Give me more sky, sky beams. I saw that in the new Ghostbusters, that there's a, there's a big blue sky beam. Yay. Did, what did we do? Did we take, what, five years off from sky beams? <laughs> if that. <sighs> what started that? Was it Avengers? That's the earliest, at least I can remember, there being a blue sky beam that everyone had to shut off. Uh, yeah. I mean, I... Yeah, I would say that kind of kicked things off. But also, just doing one thing to stop everything yeah, is kind of a trope. Yeah, like Phantom Menace. Yeah. You know, we're going to blow up, though. We blew up the Lucre Hall. Go, oh, all the droids shut off. <laughs> it's convenient. Yeah. I'm d but I, I said I've, I've been over that. Um, what did I... Wasn't it... Um, uh, Pacific Rim. Mm. I was like, this is the last time I'm accepting <laughs> this happening in a movie. Yeah, that at least made some sense, you know? Yeah. Close the breach. Always with the red lights. I know. Where people like not wanting to go, and then so I don't turn, and then I end up almost getting re oriented by a van. Fun! I love it! We got a Godzilla movie to see! Don't you know what we're doing here? Important work. <laughs> and then they'd be like, I'm gonna go see it too. And we'd be like, really? And then we would make new friends. That's right. What's your favorite Godzilla movie? Sorry, I, we almost got in that accident, but I'm super excited to go see this movie. <laughs> nope, that didn't happen. I think, uh, final prediction, Baragon's gonna show up at the end and defeat them both. I, my prediction is the one thing I've been clamoring for this entire time is an after credit scene where we've developed a Gigan. Oh, oh yes, yes. With using the DNA yes. from the Mutil. Oh yeah. Oh, it'd be so kaiju. easy. It'd be too easy. Oh, that'd be so cool. Combined with parts of... Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla, yeah. Come on. Come on. Do it, you cowards. Yeah. How much are the rights for Gigan? I'll chip in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to head in, and when we come back, raw thoughts. Raw thoughts. Yeah. All right, let's go. Well, we made a bit of a mistake. Yeah. We actually saw the wrong thing. We ended up in The Chosen Season 4. I, I don't know why you would show a weird Jesus show as a movie, but I mean, hey, whatever floats your boat, I guess. It's a whole season. It's a whole season. It's 11 p.m. right now. I'm an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> what, this is garbage. Not meant for me, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Although, that that was one sexy Jesus. Yeah. When, like, the whole tunic came off, and I was like, <sighs> I get why people are into the yeah, show. They know what they were doing. Oh, yeah. His shepherd staff was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't anymore. No, <laughs> uh, yeah, we saw we saw the, the right movie. Yeah. <sighs> Godzilla X Kong 
the, the hyper the new empire extensions. It should have been called Kong X Godzilla, right? The new empire because Godzilla really wasn't a big part of it. Not really, but maybe that's a thing with uh, getting the rights from Toho. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He has to have first bill in there, in the yeah. title. But I, you know. Oh, okay, we'll get into it. <laughs> um, just basic plot synopsis, I guess, would be um, just sad. Sad Kong wanders the Hollow Earth, finds another Hollow Earth inside the Hollow Earth, <laughs> and goes to the under realm of the second Hollow Earth, and finds out that that's where the Scar King guy is, and he's a jerk. And there's a bunch of other big monkeys down there, too. Yeah. Lots of uh, animated sapiens. Yeah, and uh, the the deaf girl who had the connection with Kong in the last movie is back, and she can, like, she can, like, sense something, these signals or whatever. It's an SOS. Yeah, they're trying to figure out what that's all about. Yeah. In case you didn't know, we're probably going to have some spoilers, so... Yeah. We'll try not to ruin any of the, like, the super major stuff, I guess. But, I don't know. It might come up. Who knows? This is just our... Just us puking out our initial thoughts. Brennan, did you like it, at least? (laughs) I... Um... I could say that I liked it. It's a lot. It it was just... There was, like, maybe two pages of dialogue in that entire movie. Yeah. And the rest was just, and then they fight. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, in a way. And there was just a lot of ADR. Yeah. I and mean, yeah. when we were watching the credits, I said, oh, yeah, the ADR guy should have gotten the first spilling on this yeah because it's just a lot of voiceover and sometimes it's necessary which is okay but it's so blatantly obvious it was taking me out of the movie a lot and if you've played a lot of video games i'm pretty sure there's a video game guy voice where he's just like i'm explaining things as they happen yeah I'll say, too, the first, like, maybe 15 minutes of that movie were just... It went so fast. Like, the editing, like, the pacing was just crazy off. That movie had no time to, like, breathe. Like, it didn't actually, like, slow down until the middle of the movie. And that was nice. Because the first, like, 15 minutes was just this and that and then there's there's a fight and then there's this and then it's Godzilla and then it's Kong and then it's Hollow Earth and then it's people and they're talking and then it's like slow down yeah I feel like they just had a lot to cram in it did feel that way yeah which is I I don't know I guess that's not a bad problem to have right (laughs) where you just have a lot of story you want to make sure happens but I mean you could have done this without Godzilla yeah. Just saying. Yeah. You didn't need to have Godzilla in it. Not that I'm complaining that Godzilla was in it, because the Godzilla stuff was pretty fun, but just Godzilla doing stuff. It was pretty, it's pretty rushed, too. It's like, oh, here's Godzilla fighting a monster for 30 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, and then we're going to cut back to everything else going on. Oh, here's Godzilla. Here's what he's doing right now. He's doing this one thing. Oh, we're back. Yeah, and I found myself, whenever they would go to Godzilla, I was like, ah, oh, I Yay. was just getting into what was happening. <laughs> because it's really not the worst. I don't know. Like, it's, it's some pretty interesting stuff in it. Lots I, of science mumbo-jumbo. Oh, yeah. Um, conspiracy theory podcast guy's back. Yeah, uh, Bernie. No, what's his name? He was pretty great. He's good comedic relief. Yeah, he is. Um, you get, like, a new character. He's named Trapper. He's, like, a 
I don't know. He's he's Kong's vet, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. And man, some of the super science stuff in this is just off the charts bonkers. Yeah. I thought it was like pretty wild in the last one, but it's just like no holds barred in this one. <laughs> like whatever. It's all crazy. Yeah, and that whole thing with the Hollow Earth made really didn't make sense. Okay, made less sense. <laughs> well, the the movie has like a lot of title cards, like location text, you know, and a lot of it was just either like unnecessary. Like we open up to clearly the Hollow Earth. Like the opening shots, it's the Hollow Earth. We know what it looks like. And then it just said somewhere in the hollow earth. Like, I don't need that. I know where we are. And it's not somewhere either. That's like a research outpost. Like, that's a known location. And then there, then yeah, Kong goes deeper. And then it was like hollow earth subterranean level. Yeah. And then what is like that? A, yeah. It's all subterranean, isn't it? It's all, it's, it's all underground. How does that work? But no, like seriously, he goes to like a lower section that's just more hollow earth. But it looks like the other how it's, and then there's like a another level. There's like three levels, and I'm like, yeah. what is going on here? Yeah, and it, and it's mentioned in the lore dump, the the fat lore dump that happens. Okay. That I got something to say. Yeah. About oh that. yeah, yeah. But it in in that part, it was said that like Scar King and all the other like big apes were trapped down there like they were stuck that's why they they haven't been doing anything but they're not stuck they're they're just chilling like they're just chilling down there there wasn't anything blocking them from leaving well they have their own section of hollow earth yeah and then they have like wherever they live where it's just crummy yeah like they're choosing to live in the, the crappy right neighborhood. like why are they down there they don't have to be. And it, it was like, they want to get back to the surface in order to just, I don't know. Take over. Take over the surface. A new empire, as the title would suggest. Yeah. Um, no Skybeam. Look, yeah, I thought there was going to be more Skybeam in that. Oh, no Millie Bobby Brown either. I was yeah. very thankful for that. <laughs> that made me happy. That bumped it up a star for me. Yeah, um, the, what is it? The Iwi are back. Mm-hmm, yeah. The, from, the tribe from Skull Island. Well, they're not back. Well, they There's kind just, of are. Yeah. I mean, they're back in the movies. Yeah, there's some living underground. Which, okay. They're, somebody's got to talk. I mean, it's fine having the one girl who's like the last of the Skull Island tribe communicate with sign language. I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. I've got no problem, no, no beef with that. But when you have a whole society where they're telepathic and just like nobody's talking, but then you make other characters give like basically what should be their dialogue mm -hmm. and explain things like... Oh, I can just all of a sudden, like, I'll just read you all these, like, all the text. All the text. All and all the story. And it's just, like, a couple of images. There's no actual words. Yeah. It's and just pictures. she's just, like, telling a story. And that was really frustrating because I, I just kept thinking, this is their moment. Their leader should be telling them this. Yeah. Even if it's, it's just all voiceover anyway. So why can't she just speak to them telepathically and we can hear it? Y yeah, yeah. Because if I if I remember correctly, John C. Riley could communicate with them, couldn't he? The he ones could. on Skull Island. Yeah. Like he just knew what they were saying because they would they would talk to him. Oh, it was just really frustrating in parts. Yeah. But like the effects it makes big, but I'd say for the most part positive. Mm-hmm. I liked a lot of the fights. They were clear. You could tell what's yeah, going on most of the time. Definitely. Um, there are a couple, like, ropey moments in it, but, like, there's reasons for it. Pretty wacky stuff happens, too. It, there's a lot of wacky stuff in this. Yeah. I mean, it felt very old school in a way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, where they would just be like, 
well, here's the thing that's happening. And they just, you know, you, you just cut to somebody who just tells you what's happening. Yeah. It's also weird to have all these people that can't talk in a movie that already has such little dialogue in it. That's what I mean. Like, they should have just at least one of them. But you know what? If you get some mustard on your head, you can talk to Mothra. Yeah. Let's give a little mustard. It's nice to see Mothra, though. Yeah. Saving the day. Yeah, I'm not the, not the cutest of Mothra designs. <laughs> Mothra's kind of terrifying. Yeah. But still, like, I don't know. Still Mothra. The spirit is there, I suppose. They got the little roar down pretty good. Which, yeah, Godzilla, lots of roaring in this movie, first off. So much roaring. Everybody's so much roaring. roaring. All over the place. So you get up from your chair or whatever, you wake up, roar. You kill something, roar. You see something, roar. And also, like, we didn't get any good classic Godzilla. No screonking. No, not really, no. Just some, like, pretty basic roars, which was a little disappointing. I mean, Godzilla's new look was cool, but, I don't know, you don't really get to experience much of it. No, not, not a whole lot. Robot Glove was pretty fun. Yeah, surprisingly enough, I kind of like that. You know, where you can just, like, I'm going to traverse miles and miles in the uh, Hollow Earth by myself to just get this random thing that happens to just be here. It's, like, just, you know... Whatever. <laughs> Very convenient. <laughs> Awfully convenient. I didn't even know that that outpost was actually in the Hollow Earth when they showed it earlier in the movie. Oh, really? Yeah, I just thought like it was just like by a portal or on Skull Island, perhaps. Yeah. So you have this advanced research station in the Hollow Earth that's run by like three people. Meanwhile, there's all sorts of like. Monarch tech and whatnot above ground. Yeah, and then the personnel that they pick to go on this mission are just like two basically random people. Three, really. And like one of the heads of your research department. Yeah, and let's have a moment for uh, the pilot guy that takes them down. Yeah. What was with that guy? <laughs> uh, he's pretty funny though. I mean, yeah, he had his moments, but I was just like, wait, I don't know. <laughs> there was something about him that felt really off. Butter uh, representation, I suppose. Yeah. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, like, would be like, Ugh, the representation. No, I just mean, like, oh, you have, like, what was he, like, Irish or Scottish? Scottish? Something. So, there you go. But he was just kind of like, I don't know, stout. Yeah. I did like Kong setting some traps. Yes, that, that was, was fun. pretty fun. And that happens right away in the movie. Too, yeah, you yeah. see that? He can set traps. He's got that kind of intelligence. No wonder they had to turn the Hollow Earth monster's blood green. Oh, yeah. That's a good, that's a good topic because... There was clearly far more gore in this movie. <laughs> yeah. That must have, they must have had the change. I would it, love to see, like, the unrated cut of this. Yeah, some red blood, dude. It would be really metal. It'd be so cool. Because it's pretty, it's pretty gloopy. There's lots of monster glop and mm -hmm. guts and stuff in this. Which got a good chuckle out of me. Definitely. What I did not expect, that little uh, Kong Jr. Yeah. getting used as a weapon <laughs> by Kong, that that was so funny. Oh, yeah. That had to be one of the funniest parts of that movie. They're just using basically a child yeah. as, a, as a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a, a lot. <laughs> I mean, 
mean, overall, it's it's fun. It was a very it fun would, movie. You know what? I would have loved this as a kid. I had a big smile on my face the whole, like, last half of that movie. When it was just bonkers. Yeah. I mean, it for its faults, it's a lot of fun, though. I'm going to say that. I had fun watching it. And I can't fault it for that. And there's, like, cool monster action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What else, Brennan? Oh. What else do we got? Well, it's just so interesting to talk about because there isn't, like, a lot to talk about. I don't know, because <laughs> it was just, like, Hollow Earth business going on, and then there was no, like, B-plot. There, there really wasn't any B-plot. It was just, like, your A-plot was Hollow Earth people and Kong, you know, and then your B-plot was just, like, Godzilla, Godzilla <laughs> when they'd cut to him for, like, a minute, maybe. Yeah, and all, he, all Godzilla does is like go around, power up. Yeah, just get ha- just get juiced up. Take it takes a nap in the Coliseum, which yeah. is pretty fun. Yeah, cute. I don't know. I could see that getting memed. Him uh, eating that nuclear reactor was really cool. Actually, I was a fan of that. There's lots of globe trotting in this, which is yeah, I appreciate. I did appreciate that too. Nice locations being yeah. used, like seeing Godzilla in Rome. Okay. Yeah. Godzilla's Apparently, never he been just Rome. really wants to hang out in Rome. Yeah. Which is super fun, I guess. Like, yeah, sure. I, don't know, I was I was cool with it. Get um, some more Godzilla fans. <laughs> um, yeah, there's like some uh, Egypt. Uh huh. Oh. Also, um, Brennan, look up the population of Rio de Janeiro uh, and divide it by half. At least. <laughs> because. Uh, no time to evacuate. Rio de Janeiro got all the 9-11s. Yeah, they really just gloss over that pretty quick. There's a couple times where it's like, oh no, there's people here. Anyway, here's Godzilla just melting like like 10 buildings. <laughs> Yeah, the amount of collateral damage from just monster fights is insane. Which I would have thought that they would have, like, toned that down a bit. Because the last one I felt, I mean, there, there was a lot of, like, destruction involved with that. Right. Because, like, even in King of the Monsters, when everything goes down in Boston, it was evacuated. For the most part. And then, yeah, when everything goes down in Hong Kong, in Godzilla vs. King Kong, or Godzilla vs. Kong, there was no evacuation. And this one, definitely no evacuation. <sighs> Yikes. Yeah. You can't think about these things. <laughs> no. There was, there was a part in that movie where... Kong fought a big serpent monster, and then right after that, Godzilla fought a big serpent monster. That were that were different. It's poetry. It rhymes. Tiamat. Yeah, that was Tiamat. A, Tiamat. Yeah, yeah, Tiamat. That was a cool monster that they showed for for you know a minute. Yeah, fun little D and D reference there. Yeah. But uh. Yeah. I thought there would be a couple, like, more interesting kaiju, I suppose. There's the not Godzilla freezy one that Scar King has captive. Yeah, Shimu. Pretty cool. I, I heard that, like, Shimu is supposed to be, like, the first Titan or something like that. Or Shimu is, like, an ancient relative of Godzilla. That's why they look alike. But also, the, in that in that lore dump... They refer to Godzilla as the one who ate a star. <laughs> what does that mean? What it's does that nuclear mean? powered, I guess. But yeah. they all kind of are. So. Yeah. Lots of just, I don't know, ridiculous tech. Yeah, yeah. I think Future I already brought tech. that up but already, but just like the, I don't know. Like, whatever ship they take to the Hollow Earth is just wildly over-designed. Uh-huh. 
insanely impractical. I mean, I is this just like a movie where the like Kong is one of the main characters? Yeah, Kong is the main character. Yeah. Also, they did a good job like characterizing him. Yeah, I'll say yeah, I I agree because everybody had good personalities and mm-hmm. you got who they were. Yeah. And this, and that's good to do with little to no communication from the biggest stars in your movie. Mhm. Like you could follow along what was happening with all, you know, the monsters roaring at each yeah. other. Yeah. Kind of tell what they're talking about. Yeah. All the other, I don't know, apes for lack of a better term. I mean, I guess like Scar King really kind of wasn't even a orangutan. Kind of is. But kind I don't of know. Is, they're yeah. kind of like their own thing, I guess. Yeah. Whatever was up with that weird little crystal, too, that he had. Oh. That one that could control Shimu. That never got explained, but I guess it doesn't have to. No. There's so much in that that just... I don't know why they even bothered explaining a lot of it. Yeah, no kidding. Just, like, even thinking about it's kind of making my heart hurt, where I'm like, uh, just, just make it a thing and it's okay. We don't have to over-explain everything all the time. And I think that's why a lot of that ADR was in there. Because a lot of it would just be like, I have to explain a thing right now. So mm-hmm. the audience can understand. Yeah. I'm sure that was probably like some bizarre producer note. Go, oh, what was that really bad? Well, oh, there was such a bad line. Like, and if Godzilla does that, he's going to he's gonna power up. or oh, he, He's going to become super powered. He's supercharged. That's what sort of Yeah. <laughs> He'll be supercharged. Yeah, that was the video game. Yeah, voice. yeah, the guy on the submarine. Completely ridiculous. All right. Well, wow. I guess we're at the end of our journey. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts? Um, it was pretty fun. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be a good movie, so I suppose I can't be surprised when, like, it just wasn't written all that well, you know? Yeah, but I mean, at least it was fun. Very fun. Very, very fun movie. If you want to go watch a movie that just has a ton of action in it, and it shows you the action very clearly, it's a pretty good movie to watch. Yeah. It's a good addition to the MonsterVerse, which is just, I don't know, becoming more and more kid-friendly, and that's not a bad thing. That's what usually happens. And, I don't know. Thought it was, I thought it was pretty decent. Needed more Godzilla. Yeah. Needed more Godzilla, for sure. And, uh, just maybe, I don't know. It's really hard to say just make a better story because it's not like it had the worst story. No, it really didn't. It just, I don't know. It, it just lacked something and it, I can't put my finger on it. I think a problem with it is that the events of that movie felt like they took place in like a day or like five hours. That's most movies now though. Yeah. Well, you just have no sense of There's no time. No breathing room. Yeah. That was a problem with the movie. Things don't have a chance to really build up they just you're going from one thing to the other right so yeah that's it um hey uh, tell us how you um watch this movie did you watch it in a garbage can did you <laughs> i don't know i'm, just, I'm tired <laughs> um right in yeah are you a baragon fan yeah right in I, yeah Hashtag, uh, what was that hashtag? <laughs> Justice for Barragon. Justice for Barragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch it, not trend. Yeah. Uh, right into the podcast, Corrupted Youth Pod at gmail.com. Um, buy our stuff at the T Public store and the and links in the notes. You can look really cool. Uh, that's right. I'm wearing one right now. Uh, go ahead and get yourself um, stuff. And hey, Thank you, Dongles. Thank you. Fellow podcasters, too. Yeah, speaking of which, I just did a guest spot on Hello, This is the Doom Show. We cover the movie 
bloody movie, and we had a bloody good time. <laughs> it's lots of fun. Check it out. And um, until next time, I guess, uh, hang in there, dongles. Yeah. Dead you!